In honor of the 8th film's release, every day until its premiere, I will be reviewing the entire Fast and Furious franchise from every high and low point. This is not something that I grew up with. In fact, I always had a bad impression of the series, thinking it was literally only about cars, hot girls, and rap music. And I was kinda right, but it was way more than I expected. After watching these films for the first time a couple years ago, I became an instant fan, and I can recite Fast and Furious lore just as well as Star Wars or Back to the Future. So here it is, my thoughts on every single film, culminating in my review of The Fate of the Furious. Every story has a beginning. Actually, to be honest, the first film, The Fast and the Furious, didn't seem like it intended to start a franchise. It really feels like a standalone film. Imagine if this movie bombed and none of the sequels ever happened. It'd probably just be a nostalgic gem that people look back at as a time capsule of the early 2000s. The hairdos, the colors, the language, the soundtrack, the effects, it's outdated, but I love it. Seriously, I think this is probably my favorite film in the entire franchise, and I think it's for a couple of reasons. One is the characters. Vin Diesel and Paul Walker are essentially playing themselves, but they have good charisma and charm, and you can't help but love them. In films like this, something would usually come off as unintentionally douchey or despicable, but they'd succeed in making two very different but likable guys. Another positive is the story, something that the later sequels seem to ignore. This movie really did have a solid plotline with great pacing and really exciting car chases. I know some fans seem to miss the racing aspect of the franchise, but the original movie at least didn't focus on only racing. It was about the culture, but it also had some other moving parts to it. It's not like the two upcoming sequels that were literally only about racing, but we'll get to those. Of course, the movie has aged in certain scenes. For example, Dominic Toretto is stealing VHS TVs. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. I guess the movie was a little scared to do anything serious, like drug dealing or anything, so they were like, eh, just have him steal a couple VHS TVs, that, that'll be fine. I would make the joke that over time, he would go from stealing DVD players to eventually stealing a hundred million dollars, but the sixth film literally makes that joke. Starts out stealing DVD players in East LA, ends up heisting a hundred million dollars in Rio. There's also burgers being sold for $2.99, a floppy disk, and just everything else that I mentioned earlier that makes this film a time capsule. But it works in the same way that Ferris Bueller or Home Alone works. It's outdated in some areas, but that adds to its essence. Like, it kind of takes you back to that time you either remember, or if you're too young, it takes you back to a time that you can experience. It's kind of cool. I also love that certain mainstays of the series were established right from the get-go, like the first person to grab food at the table has to say grace, or the love for Corona and the use of Nas. Will somebody just give me a cigarette? Get him a cigarette. Don't get him a cigarette. But you quit. Yeah, I did quit. Just give me a cigarette. Get him a cigarette. No! This scene goes nowhere, but I don't know. I think it adds to its environment. I don't think this movie ever intended to have a sequel, because on its own, it's a pretty good movie. It's fun, it's enjoyable, it's cool, and I don't know, I just love every second of it, I can't help it, I just really like this movie, and it's kind of shocking to see where the series would go after this. Well, we'll see you tomorrow for Too Fast, Too Furious. You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. Thanks, man. No.